Good evening. My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to extend this opportunity to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, December the 8th. We'll sing several songs of praise to our Lord, observe the Lord's Supper, and then I have a message for you that I hope will be uh, beneficial and enlightening to you. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook entitled Songs of Faith and Praise. Don't know if you have that book, but I will give you the number in our book and the title uh, in case you have a different book or can Google the song and sing along with us. The first song that we will sing is number 991. This is my father's world. 991. This is my father's world. <clears throat> this is my father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my father's world, I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hand the wonders wrought. This is my father's world, the birds their carols raise. The morning light, the lily white, declare their Maker's praise. This is my Father's world, He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear Him pass, he speaks to me everywhere. This is my Father's world. Oh, let me never forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus who died shall be satisfied and earth and have me won. Very, very good. If you would turn to song number 399. 399, the title of this song is Jesus Calls Us. 399, Jesus Calls Us. <clears throat> Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our lives While restless sea Day by day his sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, follow me. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden star. From each idol that would keep us Saying, Christian, love me more. In our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease, still he calls in cares and pleasures. Christian, love me more than these. Jesus calls us by thy mercies, Savior, make us hear thy call. Give our hearts to thine obedience, 
serve and love thee best of all. Before the Lord's Supper, <coughs> say number 705, 705, a common love. 705, <coughs> a common love. <clears throat> a common love for each other, common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord, a common strength when we're weary, a common hope. For tomorrow a common joy in the truth of God's Word. One of the things that we are instructed to do on the first day of the week is to gather together in His name and partake of communion, partake of the Lord's Supper. Jesus instituted this on the night in which He was betrayed when He I met with his disciples at Passover and he explained to him what his fate would be. And he gave them a memorial. And that's, this is what the Lord's Supper is. It's, an, it's a memorial. It's an, a memorial signifying that Jesus died for our sins, that he gave up his body, that he shed his blood, that uh, God's grace would uh, come upon us. He did this because it was the new covenant, one sacrifice, one time for all. And Jesus, as both the Son of God, divine, and the Son of Man, in the form of human being, uh, went to the cross. He physically suffered the agony that any man would suffer if his hands and his feet were nailed to a cross. And so as we gather about the table, Let's remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us as we partake of these emblems that signify his body and signify his blood. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we can't even imagine the agony that Jesus must have been in when they nailed his hands and his feet to the cross. It's difficult for us to even hearken to that but we know that he did we know that he did that and he went through that for each one of us he did that he gave up his body that many might live he gave up his body as an offering as a sacrifice that we may one day live with you in heaven bless us as we partake of this bread we pray it in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the cup. We're grateful that Jesus not only was nailed to the cross and suffered in that way, but that he shed his innocent blood, the life-giving substance in him. And as that blood flowed from his body and he got weaker and he died as a man, uh, we come to understand the power that is in that blood. It is the blood of our salvation. It is the blood that washes away our sins. And so as we partake of this cup, help us to remember the blood of forgiveness, the blood of salvation. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. As we have completed the Lord's Supper, there is one more thing that we are instructed to do every time that we meet on the first day of the week. 
and that is to give back to the Lord that which we have been prospered. We are to sacrifice. We are to sacrifice what we have and give it back to the Lord from whence it came. And so as we do that, help us to understand the ramifications of giving back. Help us to understand in this modern church, in order for the church, uh, God's kingdom here on earth, to fulfill its mission, uh, money uh, must be used uh, to accomplish that. And so as we give back, help us to give back with an open heart. Help us to give back cheerfully as we are instructed to do, as we're giving God back his own. Let's pray for the giving. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful not only for the opportunity to give, but we're just thankful that we have the blessing of being able to give back. And it is indeed a blessing. It's a blessing that we can do with these monies uh, what the kingdom on earth was called to do. Uh, we are uh, called to bring the word to all the world. We are called as a church to help those who are in need. Bless us in our giving. Help those that are stewards of this money to disperse it in a way that will further your work here on earth. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song we'll sing is number uh, 1014. It's a familiar song. We look at it as a children's song. It's called Jesus Loves Me. Uh, it may have been the first uh, children's song that I ever learned as a young person. Jesus loves me. <clears throat> Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus, take this heart of mine. Make it pure and holy thine. On the cross you died for me. I will try to live for thee. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. That concludes the song part of our service. I know that the Lord was praised in our singing as we are called to do. And I... Uh, hope that uh, many of you were able to get involved with the song and with the praise of our Lord, our deserving Lord. Uh, if you were there this morning, you uh, heard that the title of the lesson this evening would be Reasons to Come to Jesus. Uh, I've enumerated four, and I would like to thank my brother and New Hampshire, uh, Wayne Berger, for the genesis of this lesson in understanding why we need to come to Jesus. First, we come to Jesus 
because he has all authority. He said that when he ascended into heaven. All authority has been given to me, both in heaven and on earth. You know, everybody is guided by some authority. Here on earth, we are guided by the laws of our government, hopefully put in place that our lives would be better. However, human authorities are often flawed. Many people follow the majority, and the majority isn't always right. Because Jesus said uh, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, from the Sermon on the Mount, broad is the way that leads to destruction. And to me, that implies that that broad way is the way that many people will choose to go rather than take the narrow path. Uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 16, verse 25 says, there is a way that seems to be right to a man but its end is the way to death. You see, we have to go beyond what man says and go to what our Holy Spirit-inspired Word of God tells us. You know, in, in Jesus' day, the religious leaders were perverting even the old law. They were perverting it to the point where they tried to keep it uh, uh, legalistically instead of spiritually. And in Matthew chapter 15, verse 13 and 14, it says, every plant which my heavenly father did not plant shall be uprooted. Let them alone. And here's what he said. They are blind guides of the blind. And if a blind guide guides a blind man, both will fall into a pit. It is that old term, and you've probably heard it as a euphemism uh, in everyday life, the blind leading the blind. Well, it's a biblical term. It comes from uh, Matthew chapter 15. And Jeremiah summarized this uh, in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23, when he said, I know, O Lord, that a man's way is not in himself, nor is it in a man who walks to direct his steps? Isn't it wondrous that we have a God who will guide us in the right steps? You know, when Jesus finished the Sermon on the Mount, the people looked at one another and said, uh, and it says the, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. And it says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 28 and 29, it says that teaching them as if he had authority. You know why he taught as if he had authority? You guessed it. It's because he did have authority. He's the only authority in our life that will never lead us wrong. He's the only authority in life that will always guide us down the correct path. And so with that in mind, we know that God knows all of our needs and he's able to provide guidance for our lives so that we can have an abundant life as he explains to us in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. The second reason that we ought to uh, come to Jesus is that to, we come to Jesus because he has the greatest of concerns for those who have weaknesses, for those who are heavy laden. I don't know about you, but people with weaknesses that are heavy laden describes me. We all have weaknesses. And you know what? Often we feel the burdens of life and, and we struggle. And sometimes it makes us emotionally weary and it makes us emotionally anxious. The Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians explained in uh, chapter 4, verses uh, 6 and 7, that we are to be anxious in nothing. 
Uh, we're to be anxious in nothing but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. Jesus is concerned about those who are weak. We can't carry the burdens of the world. We are just not strong enough to do this. And with that understanding, we come to really get what Jesus meant in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. And I love these verses. They, some, they say, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest unto your souls. And then he goes on to say, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus has the ability to lighten our burdens, the burdens of life that we experience day by day. And we know we do. Uh, there's, a, there's a new one that crops up literally every day of our life. The third reason that we ought to uh, come to Jesus is because he deals with people in a way that I think we, we like to be dealt with. He deals with people in a gentle way. He deals with us because he understands that we're sinners. Jesus lived on this earth for 33 some odd years. Three and a half of those years uh, was teaching and preaching the truth of what the Father had to offer to each one of us. And so he knows that people sin. And, and as he walked the earth uh, in his earthly ministry, in Matthew 9, verse 36, it says, seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. Now, I've talked before about sheep, not the uh, most intelligent animals on the earth. And one of the things, and it goes all the way back to Jesus's time, it goes back to King David's time. We remember that one of King David's job as a youth was shepherding his father's flocks. Why? Because the sheep don't know where to go. They don't know where the water is. They don't know where the food is. Jesus is our shepherd. He tells us where our food is. He tells us where to find the bread of life. He tells us that it is in his Holy Spirit inspired word. You know, uh, if you remember when the adulterous <clears throat> woman was brought before Jesus in John 8 verses 1 to 11, uh, he did not condone her sin. And if you remember, uh, he let those people know if you're not if you're without sin, you go ahead and throw the first stone. And though he did not condone sin, when everyone left and it was just him and the woman, he said to her, go and sin no more. He dealt with her firmly, fairly, and gently. And then in Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, Jesus dealt with a man who was possessed by an evil spirit. And Jesus felt compassion on him. And he drove that evil spirit out of that man. You know, uh, we don't literally have those evil spirits and those demon spirits in us today. But we may have some kind of evil spirit. We may have something in us. Uh, our sins that we commit and our yielding to temptation 
are the evil spirits that we have to deal with. However, when we come to Jesus, he says that he will remember our sins no more. He will not send us away. Rather, he will say, draw near to me and draw near to me all who repent. Uh, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 20, Jesus quoted Isaiah 42, 1, where he describes the different way that he deals with people. And he says, a battered reed he will not break off, and a smoldering wick he will not put out. Jesus was great at using objects and things in life to get his points across. And, you know, it, it doesn't matter uh, when our lives seem to be battered in some way. It doesn't matter because Jesus will deal with us. He will bring us back to spiritual life. Uh, people almost think that their, their spirits has, have been snuffed out. But if you come to Jesus... He'll put the fire back into that wick. He'll restore that battered reed. And finally, as we complete this lesson, the fourth and perhaps most important reason that we come to Jesus is that he offers life after death. You know, Literally millions and millions of dollars are spent. And by the way, rightfully so in many cases to make people's lives extend a little longer through the, and I want to call them miracles of modern medicine and technology. Uh, people want to extend their lives and their ways that we do. We do it. If you are older, like I am, uh, you come to understand that the older we get, the more doctors we acquire. We literally have a doctor for everything. Jane and I had an appointment with our dermatology doctor uh, this past week. That is just one of the things. Jane had an appointment with a hearing doctor just a day or two ago. And so literally all the affirmities that we have, we have people that try to enrich our lives. Now the ear doctor and the eye doctor may not enrich our, our lives, but you know what? The dermatologist might. And so we go to great lengths to extend our lives. And you know what? I, I don't think that we do it because we're frightened, but maybe we might be. We go to these people, these doctors, these specialists, because we feel like that they can diagnose something that's wrong and in some way fix it so we may live a, a little bit better. And it, it doesn't have to be a frightening thought to die. Why? because we have something grander in store for us. Jesus has explained that through his sacrifice, that we have the opportunity for eternal life with him. And so in John chapter 14, verses one through three, he said to his disciples and therefore to you and I, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And here are these wonderful passages. And he says, in my father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. His, his disciples were troubled. Sometimes people are troubled near the end of their lives. And so he said, in my father's house, his mansion, there are many dwelling places. There are many rooms. And he said, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. 
When Jesus died and was resurrected from the dead, he went to prepare a place for each one of us. He said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Physical death is, the, is only the end of our physical life. If we are in the Lord, it's not the end of our spiritual life because we have the promise of life eternal. And so as we look at this lesson, reasons to come to Jesus, I will offer the invitation to you within the context of this lesson. If you haven't come to Jesus, this would be a great opportunity. Our Savior, who died for our sins. And with that in mind, we must come to him in repentance. Acts chapter 17, verses 30 to 31. We must confess that Jesus is Lord. Matthew 10, 34, 35. And then we must be immersed in water to have our sins washed away. Acts 22, 16 and Acts 2, 38. What this will do is it will put us within the spiritual body of Jesus Christ, where his blood will flow to keep us clean. And then we will walk in the light as he is in the light. When we confess our sins, we repent when we confess Jesus as the Son of God and are baptized for the remission of our sins, we become children of God. And then life after death becomes our reward. I just pray that we have lived according to what God expects us to live. And if you need to come to Jesus tonight, I've explained those steps. All you have to do is get in touch with us and we will be there for you. Let's end with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, uh, we just understand each day that we need to come to Jesus Christ. And there are so many, you know, to me, logical reasons because life is more than this physical body. It's an eternity. We have a spirit that lasts forever, though our physical body will break down. I just pray that you will bless us and comfort us. Help us as we go through life to understand that we need Jesus in our lives. He's the most integral part of our life that we can poss possibly have. Bless us in our Christian walk. Help us to walk according to the words of your Holy Spirit inspired Bible. Bless us and just keep us safe. Help us to understand that all authority has been given to Jesus, that he will handle us in a gentle way and that he will one day bring us back to him if we have obeyed him into salvation. Continue to bless us. Continue to be with us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. Oh,